What up guys, the runes protocol on Bitcoin has been out for a couple of days now, and I wanted to make a guide of my personal top eight picks when it comes to the rune space. Now about half of these have yet to release and the other half are already circulating and purchasable. And before I get into this video, I just wanna remind everyone to do your own research. These are just my personal opinions and picks of things that I'm getting into. Without further ado guys, let's get into it. Now I wanna start off by saying that Magic Eden actually just launched their runes protocol and you can actually go on their site and see all of these different runes that are already circulating as well as the different volumes and market caps. You can actually click on a certain rune such as Satoshi Nakamoto which is rune number six which it also tells you and once you pull this up you can do a bunch of different buying and selling as well as get this additional data and in the future they're going to have a swap which is going to be sort of like a dex for ruins which is going to make this whole entire buying and selling process 50 times easier. Another thing that I want to point out out is that Binance is teasing that they're going to be releasing runes. They actually released BRC20 token support, but this was three months after BRC20 tokens came out. And it wasn't until these were listed on Binance that a lot of these tokens such as Ordi really went on a massive run. And the reason is, is because trading on Bitcoin is just so expensive and a lot of people don't know how to do it. And there is a lot of friction. So all of a sudden, when you have a centralized exchange where people don't have to spend hundreds of dollars in transactions, transaction fees, it allows a lot more volume and a lot more money to be going into these different trades. And by lowering that friction, oftentimes the price increases as a result. So what's really interesting about this is that you can get into some of these runes now. And yes, it is risky because we're in the price discovery phase and there's a lot of hype. But in the future, when some of these tokens get added, they can go on massive, massive runs. So one of the things I'm looking for when it comes to these different eight projects I'm talking about today is do they have a chance of getting listed on different centralized exchanges such as Binance? And do they have some more staying power or something that is coming along with that token outside of it just being a meme that might die in a couple weeks? Now, the first project on the list that I wanted to talk about is Bitcoin Wizards. And this is an OG Ordinals project. They actually have a $21.4,000 floor and they've had their wizard token WZRD out for a while now on BRC20. Now, this token has been out and there hasn't been any major use case for it, but it was really all about this whole entire magic internet money meme, which is one of the first memes when it came to the Bitcoin space. And this project is spearheaded by some major OGs in the Bitcoin space. And now all of a sudden they announced that this wizard token or this magic internet money is now going to get transitioned from BRC20 over to the runes protocol. And they are going to be doing an airdrop to all of these different Bitcoin wizard holders as well as converting that BRC20 over to runes. Now this token is currently trading at about $6.40 and last year it was actually under 30 cents, 40 cents. So it went on a pretty big run. And recently I think this touched all the way near $15, even though it's not showing it well on coin market cap. And now it's sitting around $6.40 or around a $134 million market cap. Now I don't think them transitioning from BRC20 over to runes is going to be that big of a deal when it comes to people being able to trade this. And that's why I think a lot of these conversions are more sell on the news events rather than something that is a huge deal in my opinion. However, that being said, if they can get listed on different centralized exchanges, now all of a sudden the amount of liquidity that can flow into these different projects and into these different tokens goes up drastically. And right now, the only real place that you can really get this token is Unisat, which is a pain in the ass to buy on. And then maybe some of these really small centralized exchanges. So what's interesting about this is it's a top ordinals project led by an OG team with the OG meme of Bitcoin. And now all of a sudden they're transitioning to runes and this might be enough hype or enough traction to then get them listed on something like Binance and for this token to really start to take off. Now you can make the argument that hasn't been listed on Binance this whole time when it was in a BRC20 version, but there's a chance with all the runes hype that this is gonna be one of the main projects people pay attention to, and I think you should as well. It's a little bit riskier buying in right now, simply because it went on such a massive pump, but this is definitely one of those projects you wanna keep an eye on. The next project on the list is Pups, and this is based on the Bitcoin Puppets and Rune Pups project. Now this is another project that already has their token out and they are transitioning from a BRC20 token that can already be traded on Solana with their bridge and they're transitioning that over into this new 
rune token, as well as giving 23% of the supply to the rune puppets. And that's why they're going for so much money on the secondary. Once again, you can already buy this token and they're sitting at around a $280 million market cap. And once again, this is sort of a meme based project, which you'll see in a lot of the different projects that I'm posting on in this video. A lot of them are very meme based. That's kind of the culture on Bitcoin where there aren't that many promises, but in the end, they are all about surprising and over delivering. This is another situation where they aren't listed on too many crazy centralized exchanges outside of OKX. And between all of the hype and volume, I do see them having a chance of eventually getting listed over on Binance and potentially going on a run. But once again, because you can already trade this on Solana and some of these other platforms, I think a lot of the price is already caked in and this might be a sell the news type event. I think runes are great for new projects that are coming out with them, but a lot of these conversions I think are already priced in with the news and unless they get a major sex listing such as Binance or Magic Eden really has a lot of these different DEXs and swaps in the future, which makes it way easier to trade in a decentralized fashion. I don't expect it to go on a big run from here. We will keep an eye on this though. And if they do dump after they have their runes token, this is when I might buy up some on the secondary and wait to see what they're able to do in the future or if they're able to get those listings. The next one here is going to be RSIC Meta Protocol. And this is one of the most hype ones out there that have released and they are just on the Magic Eden and Unisat site. Now, RuneCoin had really started the whole entire farming and mining meta where they airdropped a bunch of these different RSIC SIC ordinals to different wallets that were holding a bunch of ordinals, and then you were able to actively farm them and accumulate their token. Now, what's really interesting here is you can go to the runes token tab, and you can see that they have been getting just a crazy amount of volume, and that the market cap is around $250 million. And I think at one point it was over $300 million, and a lot of people are continuing to trade this. Another important thing to know about these different runes is when they actually had their etching or creation created their token. And this is a top 10 sitting at number eight. I haven't went in and bought any of this token right now, but I really have my eyes on it because they've spent nearly $500,000 of their own money without taking a dime from the community to not only airdrop all of these ordinals, but to also airdrop all of these runes as well. And just recently they tease what's next over to the runes dev. And because of the farming and the different things that they've already done, I expect this to be a project that actually builds a lot of stuff. And I think the team must have a lot of money and not really care about cash grabbing from the community, which I think a lot of these projects over on Bitcoin are trying to do right now. So this is definitely a project to keep on your radar. And I think between the market cap and the hype and the way they've done everything, they have a high chance of getting listed on centralized exchanges in the future. The next one that I wanted to point out here that is already out is called Satoshi Nakamoto. And this was actually the sixth rune that was ever etched. And currently it has a $72 million market cap. I believe at one point it was over a hundred million dollars, but Satoshi Nakamoto continues to get a lot of volume and pays tribute to the founder of Bitcoin. Now, the really interesting thing about this rune in particular is supposedly Jack Lou was the one that etched this token. And the reason that's interesting is because Jack Lou used to be pretty high up in Circle, which is USDC, aka Coinbase. So because of that, he might have a lot of different connections in the space. And now all of a sudden he might be able to get the six etched rune that already has a good name about the founder of Bitcoin. And now through his connections, he might be able to get this listed on centralized exchanges as well. So a little bit more risky, a little bit more of a degen play with a little speculation there. But I think the name is good. It's a top 10. And with their different connections and how they did a fair distribution, I think it's one that should at least be on your radar, especially since it's under a hundred million dollar market cap. Now I want to discuss some of the runes that aren't out yet that are on my radar that I think have a lot of potential for you guys. The first one is going to be from the Runestone project, which had a floor of over five, $6,000 at one point. Now these Runestones were airdropped to anyone that had at least three ordinals that they didn't move from January of this year or before. And this was actually kickstarted by this guy, Leonidas, who is an OG influencer when it comes to the Bitcoin space. They actually spent several hundred thousand dollars airdropping all these out. And now these rune stones have been getting a ton of different airdrops as well as white listings to future projects. Now there's 113,000 of them, which is a lot. 
And the reason they dropped so much in price was because that the snapshot for their dog meme token, which is supposed to be the biggest meme token on Bitcoin, the biggest dog meme coin on Bitcoin has been taken. And because of that, there has been a sell off. Now that dog token is going to get airdropped to everyone with rune stones. And this is something that you don't have to pay for, which is really nice. Whereas a lot of other projects you might have to claim and spend a couple hundred dollars. One of the things that's really interesting is you can actually go on whales market, which I've talked about in a past video and buy some of these different runes when it comes to their pre runes tab and dog right now is about 0 0.00408. If you multiply by the 21 billion supply by this current price, you'll see that the circulating market cap or the FDV is around $86 million right now. Based on the performance of some of these other runes out there, such as $250 million market cap from RSIC, such as $250 million market cap from Pops, such as $130 million market cap from Wizard, this potentially could be pretty undervalued, especially since a lot of runestone holders were pretty diamond handed and because it's being distributed between so many different wallets. Now, I haven't gone out and bought any of this yet, but it's definitely on my radar. And I think a sub $100 million meme token on Bitcoin that is one of the earlier etchings that has so much influence and so many people's eyes on it, I think that it could potentially be a pretty good deal here. And if it does get picked up by something like Binance once again, which is all about the different dog meme coins, then I could see this going on a massive run and going over 1 billion. Once again, though, I haven't bought any of these tokens. If you use Whales Market, people will set collateral and you'll get that collateral if they in fact don't actually give you those tokens. So it is a safe platform platform to use. But yeah, something that I wanted to bring up just so you guys could see some of the current pricing of how the market is evaluating this. And there has been about $500,000 worth of volume so far. The next project here is the project that I'm probably most bullish on right now when it comes to the short term and midterm. And this is the Prometheans or the decentralized rune from the CyberKongs team. Now, if you don't know anything about CyberKongs, they're actually an OG ETH NFT project that still holds a floor of 12 Ethereum, which is really high, especially when a lot of these OG Ethereum NFT projects are no longer here. And essentially what they did is that they etched the very second ruin to ever come into existence. And they had airdropped all these different Promethean inscriptions to people that not only own CyberKongs, but people that were diamond handed wallets in the ordinal space. So they said, hey, who's got rune stones? Who's got these Bitcoin wizards? Who's been in this for a long time who's been holding all this stuff and essentially they airdropped all of these different ordinals now we don't know how much of this rune token of decentralized is going to go towards these prometheans but in my opinion we can assume that it's going to be a pretty high percent probably somewhere around 90 to 100 percent in the worst case scenario i could maybe see 80 percent the reason is is they have 21 billion tokens and 21,000 supply which would be an even 1 million tokens to everyone and they've already airdrop these Prometheans to everyone, as well as said that this next runes token is also going to be an airdrop. So we don't have to pay for that either. So it's one of those situations where the numbers really look great. But the only reason I think that they could potentially do less is in case they wanted to have an allocation to sex listings such as Binance, or in case they needed a small team allocation to help pay for all of these different expenses they've been paying. What's really interesting about these Prometheans, in my opinion, is that they have a low listed amount of two 2.5%. They have a market cap of around $80 million. And when you look at the performance of something like RSIC, where people were able to farm a bunch of these tokens, and you looked at the performance of how much volume has been traded in this past week, which they've had three times the amount of volume from these RSICs, which had a lot of trading recently, simply because the airdrop had been taken, and a lot of people are buying and selling, then it makes me think that their token could potentially have a similar performance. And with RSIC, people had to be actively farming this and engaging and some people got a ton of these tokens whereas Prometheans a lot of people might not actually know they have this because it just got airdropped maybe a week ago a little less than a week ago now and they don't actually have to be actively paying attention to get this airdrop so it's one of those situations where also the distribution is really great where they have 17.7 thousand owners with 21,000 supply so a lot of people who got these are diamond handed the listing percent is 
low. A lot of people might not know they have them. It's coming from the CyberKongs team, which is a legitimate team. It's the second ever rune ever etched. They seem to have a lot of plans for the project. They've been self-paying everything. And if it has a similar market cap compared to the other projects that have already launched, then the airdrop itself is going to cover your buying price on this on top of potentially making extra. Now I'm going to calculate what I personally expect this airdrop to be, but just realize guys that this is a lot of speculation because we don't know all the details and this is super risky. But let's just assume that this market cap goes to something similar as RSIC and PUPS. And I think that's a pretty fair comparison, but let's just say they have a $200 million market cap instead of a $250 million market cap. Well, now all of a sudden, let's just say instead of all of this money or all of these runes 100% going to these 21,000, let's just say only 80% of these tokens went to these different inscription holders. So now we have $160 million worth of value. Now, if we divide this by the 21,000 inscriptions, we're looking at $7,620 potential airdrop if they airdropped 80% and kept 20% for other reasons. And if this had a smaller market cap than both RSIC as well as pups, even though this inscription has had better performance on the secondary and triple the amount of volume. When you think about it, even in this situation, you're looking at about a $7,500 airdrop when these actual ordinals are only going for about $3,800 right now, so about 50%, and then you can still keep the actual ordinal itself. So that's kind of the numbers that I'm personally running, and that's why I recommended in my last video to buy some of these, or I bought some of these at 2.2K, and I actually bought some more of these recently around this 4k number because I think the potential upside could be so much higher and as long as the whole entire runes market doesn't dump out of nowhere I think that they could probably have a very similar market cap and I think if I'm Binance if I'm going to list some sort of runes project this is definitely one of the ones I'd have on my radar simply because CyberKongs have already proven themselves and they already have a lot of different volume not only on CyberKongs but these Prometheans as well. The next one here that's going to drop any day now is Lobo the Wolf and this is with the Rune Doors project. Now, this Rune Doors project is currently going for about $1.9,000, and this was a free mint. And if you're listening and you aren't part of the Block Investment Group or Alpha Group, join our Discord, open up a support ticket, and get a free trial pass because we actually told everyone about this free mint, and people were able to mint this and make $1,900 for free. All they had to do was pay the gas transaction fee. Like, it's ridiculous the information and opportunities that you could be missing out right now. But regardless, we have Buoyant Capital, which is a whole entire digital assets management management team. And they got the ninth etch of this Lobo the Wolf Pup. And what they're going to do is they're going to have 21 billion tokens, 17.5% are allocated to these Rune Door holders, 55% to anyone that is a Rune Stone holder, which we're seeing this common theme. And they even have a 5% bonus if you own both of them. They also have 10% reserved for exchange listings, which I think that Prometheans could potentially follow a similar route. They have 5% for the team and then 7.5% for these different marketing initiatives. Now they're saying that this is mostly just going to be a meme token. I have no idea how well this meme token is going to do, but it's worth having on your radar just because it's a top 10 etch. Their rune doors have been performing pretty well. And if you were trying to get into this, just realize that this snapshot is going to be taken by the time I make this video. I'll keep a close eye on how well these runes do on the secondary. I'm not crazy bullish on this, but they definitely have the volume as well as interest and eyes and height around them for me to include them on this list and for you guys to have on your radar. The last one that I have on this list here today is going to be Ape Odyssey from the Ape Terminal team. Now this was a free mint that once again had gone for about three to $4,000 in the beginning and then it was going for around $2,000 and then it dropped all the way to about $600 because they announced how they're going to do their Rooney token and a lot of people really fudded them for this. So essentially Rune's Terminal is building a bunch of different infrastructure including a launch pad. They have the ability to etch runes. They have a rune scanner. They're building out all of this different tech. And they're also building another project called ApeSwap Runes, which is going to be a decentralized exchange. Now, these 5,000 Ape Odysseys were the OG and they were completely free to get. But now already they're adding in another 10,000, which was supposed to only be 5,000, but they're adding another 10,000 in their Terminal 2 collection. Now, their Terminal 1 is going to get benefits of their 
alpha group, you're gonna get different airdrops, including their Rooney token, which is going to be used on the launch pad. And then you're also going to get a guaranteed whitelist if you own one of the terminal ones to get the terminal two. And those terminal two are then going to get a different token called Swap A. So definitely a lot going on in the project. They already did their first ordinals inscription with Ape Odyssey. They now have another 10,000 coming. They then have the Swap A token that they're adding in. And then on top of that, this Rooney token is going to have a public sale allocation. So I don't know how good I'm feeling about this project as I did earlier. It's feeling a little bit more cash grabby to me right now, but the team is building a lot of different infrastructure and they're saying they need to do these different things in order to actually be a longstanding project and not just like a meme coin like a lot of these other projects out there. Now, for whatever reason, I can't open up Medium articles on my laptop and it drives me crazy, but I opened it up on my phone and they gave a little bit more details about this airdrop for these different ape holders. When this airdrop goes out, 15% of the circulating supply is going to be airdrop these Rooney tokens to everyone that has these ape odysseys. Now that's only 1% of the total supply of this project, which is crazy to me. They're trying to make it seem like it's a lot higher than that by saying, oh, it's 15% circulating. But regardless, that's kind of the situation. You're also going to get another 2% of the total supply over time. I'm guessing you're going to need to stake these. They then have 13%, which is allocated towards a public sale. We're going to have to see the details on that to see if it's actually worth going for. They have 17%, which is LPKOL. I don't know exactly what the KOL aspect is. Usually it's like key opinion leaders. I don't know who exactly is providing the liquidity or the deal with that. They're saying 7% of the starting supply is going to go towards OGs, which once again, I have no idea what the OGs are. And then 13% for R2 and 35% for R1. This I'm assuming is terminal one and terminal two. But once again, they don't actually have any details for this yet. So it's one of those interesting situations where the tokenomics still aren't super clear for me. And based on the low amount of supply and not knowing the public details yet, it is a little bit more risky. But I figured I at least bring it up for you guys because I do think that this is a team that is going to deliver on a lot of these different infrastructure protocols. And if they can get a lot of different projects to launch on their runes terminal or on their runes launch pad, then this Rooney token could actually have the most amount of utility out of all the tokens out there currently and could perform pretty well. So at least have it on your radar. I have no idea how I feel about this team yet. I've got to see how you know expensive this Rooney token sale is uh, because a lot of times, guys, the legit projects that are actually trying to build something legit are doing everything for free and kind of spending the money themselves like RSIC or Prometheans from Cyber Kongs or Runestones. And that's kind of become the standard. So we'll have to see how well this does. That pretty much wraps up this video. I'm going to be making more videos about different tools and infrastructure and pretty much projects coming up when it comes to the Rune space, because I think there's a lot of potential in this. So if you enjoy that sort of content and want to stay up to date, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll try my best to cover it. Also, if you haven't been in the Discord yet, join our Discord in the description, open up a support ticket, get a trial pass. A lot of times it's way faster for me to talk about different plays in there rather than me having to make a whole video and edit it. But yeah, guys, that wraps up the video. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one.